that last moment we've been waiting for. Y'all ready? Let's get it. Kick everything on. Come on. Well, we're still sitting here, not looking good. Self leveling sieve. So it's saying a line's disconnected and then not get any kind of current. Whenever I try to move it, uh, line is connected, so we're going to try taking the uh, plug apart, cleaning it. Maybe it's got some dirt corrosion up in there, and hopefully that fixes it. Well, it don't look like none of this corn's going to come out today. You know how I said that we're more prepared than we've ever been before? This actuator right here that works my self-leveling sieves is, uh, is bad. It's a uh, freezing up and not doing what it's supposed to do and uh, these uh, sieves right here have to be level as you're going through the field if you're on a slope it'll compensate tilted one way or the other to keep them level so uh, a grain won't shift one side to the other and then uh, overload one side and go out the back so it's uh, very important so it's uh, messing up uh, hadn't even and he turned in the ro rotor on you. It is working fine when the wheat harvest stopped. And luckily, it's going to be a very easy fix. Probably not going to be a cheap fix, but at least it's going to be easy. And of course, it's after five o'clock. Uh, everybody done gone home. My parts guys check and see what stores got them. So uh, we'll be back in the morning, get this pulled off. Harvest starting off with a bang, ain't it? <laughs> All right, after uh, pretty much uh, 24 hours, Changing the actuator twice, and then finally a service call. I think this thing might be ready to go. Come to find out, it uh, looks like there was some uh, software problem in the controller that got uh, that got replaced after wheat harvest. So anyway, seems to be working now. Let's let's put some corn to this combine. Hours later. Well guys, this harvest starting off with a bang. I'm telling you what, come to find out my problem is the controller. You know, we got everything working fine in that one spot. And then as soon as I turn around and uh, kick the header and stuff on, the seeds and stuff start going haywire. Uh, I tried reflashing the controller and everything else and it just didn't work. Here's the kicker. That's the controller that I had problems with earlier this year that, uh, uh, that that worked my lights so uh i had h and r come out and put a new one on put it on in august and i mean test out the lights worked fine i just didn't crank it up and start the separator and everything else <laughs> that controller that they, that they put on is a remanufactured one because it's there's not many like new ones in stock there's no there's none in stock at the depot atlanta they don't have any so that's why i went with a, a reman controller even though i haven't had great luck with reman parts in the past all right that's about the only option we got plus it was significantly cheaper 
So that Reedman controller we got was bad from the get-go. You know, took dang near all day to fi finally figure that out because just kept on doing weird stuff. So now I'm headed to uh, just north of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I can't remember the name of the store, like Apple Farm Supply or something. I can't remember the name of the store. Just north of Dayton to get another controller because they actually have a new one in stock. That was the closest place that had one in stock. So it's uh, right at 7 o'clock, just leaving out. Got about an eight-hour drive in front of me. Going to try and catch a couple hours sleep at a hotel right there in Dayton. Be there first thing tomorrow morning. Hopefully be back in the field mid-afternoon tomorrow and maybe, just maybe, tomorrow if the stars align, the good Lord smiling on me, we'll be able to run some corn tomorrow evening. folks got new controller twenty six hundred dollars later gps says i should be home by 4 30 i'm going to see if i can shave at least 45 minutes off of that and hopefully the tech is available to uh, come out and install it because it's you don't just plug it up it's got to be uh programmed and assigned and uh, i don't have the software to do that so, guys i'll also tell y'all this is a this is the second time I've had to come just north of uh, Dayton to get emergency parts. And I gotta say, for those of y'all that live up here in this area, man, y'all are lucky. This this is some of the most beautiful area farming country that I have ever seen. I mean, the nice rolling hills, fields a decent size, but man, it seems like everything is so extremely well maintained. You know, the little towns that I drive through are just picturesque i mean absolutely beautiful up here i love coming to this country y'all are really fortunate and y'all do a good y'all do a dang good job of taking care of your properties if i had to move from where i'm at right now this would definitely be my number one spot i'd want to visit all right going to burn some rubber getting home so y'all back at the combine and maybe just maybe I'll put just a little bit of grain in that grain tank today. All right, 48 hours after we have first brought our combine over here. Hopefully we got what we need to get this sucker running. I'm anxious to put some corn in the bin. h and is already waiting out here on me. At least my corn ought to be a couple points drier by now. Got some clean cobs all the way down. I think Matt's checking the moisture right now, but we are making some, finally cutting some corn and making some progress. Well, that's as, as far as we've possibly made it so far, but I don't know why he's coming back to the service truck. That's a, uh, that's a good sight to see. I don't know if y'all can see or not because of the sun, but here in real life vision, that's a great sight to see. The combine is going around the cornfield and the buggy is following right in behind. We've got a nice empty truck here that is craving to get loaded. The serviceman is finally gone. Now, I believe we have finally started cutting 2023 corn. See if we have to, let's cut until it's wet tonight. So, cut until the dew falls. Oh yeah. Here he's coming straight to the truck this time. All right, it's time to ask your favorite question. What's the moisture? <laughs> What's the moisture running? Looks like somewhere around 21 and a half percent. 21 and a half. That's, 
That's cuttable, really. It's definitely a uh, point and a half drier than what it was two nights ago when we thought we were going to start. So, this breakdown wasn't the worst thing in the world. That was 21.4. We just had to run the fans and it'll be a last song to train them. That's good. So, everything and all the, everything's running like it should. Yeah, we got, uh, had a few other things we had to calibrate that the controller controlled, but, uh, like it was running fine now, now we just gotta calibrate the yield monitor, calibrate the portion monitor right now, so, do that. Make sure it's set right, I think we'll be ready. Ready to, ready to finally cut some corn. Now, one pass down and one pass back, you got two-thirds of a bin. That's looking good. That's not bad. Last year I had to drive around for an hour to get two thirds. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do a kill stall here to check her off. Alright, first thing we're gonna check right here behind the header, see how many kernels we see on the ground and cause of the you know moisture around 20-21%. I don't expect to see any or very little, if any, head loss. Right, there, there's no kernels there whatsoever. It's clean as a pen. Same way over there, just a couple little ones off the very end. All right, looking back here on the residue, we want to examine the cobs, make sure all the corn off the cobs and everything. And also, we want to make sure that our cobs aren't split lengthwise if they're split lengthwise then that means we got our concave setting too close but you know they're all come out whole you know the only place they're broken is where the chopper hit them so they're not split lengthwise i'm not seeing any kernels left on the cob whatsoever now we're gonna get right here behind the combine and uh see how much corn we got on the ground There's two right there. And we're going to look how many's in a square foot. There's two there, two there, one there. I'm seeing a couple scatter, probably about twice as many as what I'd like. So what I'm seeing is probably about two bushels on the, two bushels per acre on the ground. So we're gonna go back here to the combine and see if we can find out exactly where it's coming from. see if we find any kernels out here I say you know we, we got cobs out here so the spreader's throwing it so uh, all right so we got one kernel there we got a really small kernel there we got a kernel right there so you know that's at least two square feet right there and got two kernels I should have gotten and then a small one that could have very well just been blown out because it was light. So we don't have a uniform loss. So that tells me that the loss is not coming out the back of the combine. Most likely uh, might be a leak somewhere there, a small, a real small leak somewhere there on the feeder or right there at the corn head where it, uh, where it uh, goes in the throat. All right, kind of see some there. We're, we're in front of the combine. So see right here, we're getting some lofts right in front of the combine. And then looking up here on the header, 
say his camp right here. Those kernels. That's where our loss is coming from. You know, we just got the auger just right here on the other side of the, the other side of this panel as that auger turns, it's going to, uh, you know, it's going to start threshing the corn a little bit and that's what it's doing. It's kicking uh, some kernels out right through here. So probably tomorrow, I don't know, maybe bring some, uh, maybe try to find some foam or some cardboard to kind of fill in that gap right there and eliminate that head loss. And, Otherwise, I think our combine is set and ready to go. Now, I know you're joking. It's one thing, if it's not one thing, it's definitely another. We literally just got going good on corn. I come in there, turn around and get straight so Kelly can dump on me and I hear this, the airline. I thought we just, I thought I just busted an airline. I was like, you have got to be joking. But I can, I can handle a, a, turn, a turned valve. Let's get this air built back up and let's keep rolling. just sounded like Kelly just ended out, emptied out on her buggy and I believe I've got a full load now so I just gotta wait a couple more seconds let her do some mathing and see, see what our first load of of this field's gonna weigh out to our moisture right now is like right at 20 21 19 and so we're, we're 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 looking good right now she just takes me 57,580. 57,580 pounds. See how many bushels that was. It's about 1,028 bushels. That's about right. So that means I'm loaded. Now we go get to dump the first load and test out our, our newly paved, our newly paved little uh, grain bin pull in. Not paved, newly graveled. Just uh, just shelled a full load, and my calibration was off 12 pounds on a 17,500 pound load. I I'd say we got her calibrated pretty dang close. I uh, reckon we're gonna try and finish the rest of this truckload out and probably call her a day. I'm tired and I'm ready to go to bed.
going in there. And I don't see it at all. I don't even see any corn on the floor. So we gotta, we gotta shut the gate on the trailer real quick. Go in the bin just to make sure there's some corn on the floor. And I know that was not open, open good enough to actually see that thing spinning, but before I open it wide open and actually pour some corn in there, let's just, let's just double check, make sure everything is going good. We do not need another problem today or really the rest of corn harvest. So it's a good thing that it's all going in the bin. So let's let's open her a little, open her a lot more and see what happens. You can hear it. I just heard it go all the way across the pipe. Let's see if it jumps any in my hand. There's just a big pile right in front of the auger. I know y'all couldn't see it because it was pitch black in there. But, oh, that means that spinner is not spinning. decided to cut two trucks uh, man it sure felt good to clear out some of this uh, corn here well, I gotta say today would not have been possible without the good folks at H&R AgriPower and especially Apple Farm Services in Covington Ohio you know when I've been hunting for parts that not available locally during harvest I've called other dealers who have after hour service and they refuse to go into the store to see if they've actually got the part that the computer says they do because I'm not a local customer. But Adam at Apple Farm Services did not do that. He said, I'll be glad to go check for you. I called him at like 6.30 or so their time and about uh, 30 minutes later he called me back said, I'm looking at it right now. I said, I'm on my way. So I cannot appreciate their service good enough to you know, go in late in the evening and check on a part for somebody who's never been a customer of theirs before. And there's a good chance probably won't ever be a customer of theirs before because they're like seven and they're, because they're like eight hours away. But thanks a ton of uh, Apple Farm Services and H&R for getting the tech out to me in a timely manner and then be, being able to send him back out again whenever I got that controller so he could get it programmed and installed. So Harvest 2023 finally underway. We gonna get after tomorrow, see what we can get done. But meantime, my eyes is burning. I gotta pull my contacts out. I'm ready to go to bed. We'll see you back here in the morning. Wow, this is some terrible lighting, but I believe now that it's getting dark, I believe that we are finished cutting for the night. Um, the spinner on and bend well bin three but the bin that we're dumping in the spinner up top is not spinning so there's really no point in putting in another load after this one and we're gonna try and fix it in the morning sorry i just dropped all my paperwork but so kelly is dumping on me right now we're gonna get through two loads and even if the spinner was working we just got the combine fixed so when you cut at night you're pretty much asking to break something and that is not what we need. We're already later than everybody else harvesting corn, so guess they're gonna come back out here in the morning.